Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the resolution on the floor of this Honorable House today. But before I speak on this resolution, Mr. Speaker, I beg your permission to express my condolences to the people in my constituency who have passed, but more so to the people, to the families and friends of Mr. Donnie McKinnon, who was murdered in Sufre on Saturday. Mr. Speaker, it is always so difficult to lose a loved one and a friend, but I believe it is critical as a parliamentary rep that I express the feeling of the people of Sufre and my own personal feelings. I also want to take this moment, Mr. Speaker, to wish Mr. Peter Jackson a speedy recovery. Mr. Speaker, today as well, with your permission, I want to recognize the women in this parliament and the women of St. Lucia as we continue within our 16 days of activism against violence. Mr. Speaker, I also want to take this moment to thank the Honorable Prime Minister for his support in recognizing gender balance and in having and electing our first female leader of the Senate, president of the Senate, Mr. Speaker. This is a leader that is telling us that he understands gender balance. Mr. Speaker, on the issue before us, which is the resolution by the Minister of Finance to borrow US $102,128,298 US dollars, or approximately EC $276 million from the Export Import Bank of the Republic of China to provide budgetary support for fiscal, fiscal year 2022-2023. Mr. Speaker, I listened attentively to the Minister of Finance and Prime Minister as he laid this resolution on the floor of this House. He cited the authority for doing so as Section 631A of the Public Finance Act Number 14 of 22. 2020. Secondly, the Honorable Member outlined in detail the purpose of the said loan and some of the reasons he gave, funding, as I said, the 2022-2023 budget, part payment for DFCs, which is the design, finance, construct projects, part payment for land acquisition, um, payments to local pay, um, payment of local payables, and that is to local suppliers, persons who provide goods and services to the government of St. Lucia, and to deal with some capital and current expenditure in the estimates. And the Honorable Member as well wrapped this all up in terms of ensuring that this loan would have the effect of economic recovery and growth. But Mr. Speaker, what I really want to speak on today is the last reason, which is the, re the issue of debt reprofiling. Mr. Speaker, the issue of borrowing is of concern to all St. Lucians, and consequently, it is a national, of national importance. So our discussion here today, we have to be detailed and deliberate as to why we are coming to this honorable house to borrow. Because John Public, that's what you're going to say. Why has the government come in to take another debt? Because we know we are burdened. We inherited a huge portfolio of debt, Mr. Speaker. But so why are we doing this today? So Mr. Speaker, first I want to make reference to the Prime Minister's 
budget address of April 26, 2022. And on page 58 of that budget address, Mr. Speaker, page 58 and 59. And if you have permission, I'll read a paragraph. And I'm quoting from page 58, Mr. Speaker, on the debt management. Mr. Speaker, debt is an inescapable reality. If we are to finance the capital investment necessary to expand the economy. While COVID-19 provided access to concessionary loans, the current disruption in the global economic environment brought about by the Russia-Ukraine war will result in higher interest rates, making borrowing more expensive. Mr. Speaker, we will be frank and honest with the people of St. Lucia about our debt position. The current level of public debt now stands at 90.6% of GDP, or $4.13 billion. The debt stock includes central government debt, government guaranteed debt, and public sector debt. But a paragraph that is more important, Mr. Speaker, and I'll read it now. It says, the preferred route to bringing public debt under control is to generate surpluses on the primary account. In the current circumstances, this is not likely. And therefore, my government's immediate debt policy strategy is to reduce its dependence on short-term high interest borrowing through the use of treasury bills and to pursue long-term financing with lower interest rates from multilateral agencies, financial institutions, and friendly governments. End of quote, Mr. Speaker. These are the words of the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. So today what we are doing is just that, Mr. Speaker. This loan, and when I look at the estimate of revenue and expenditure for 2022-2023, and I go over to pages uh, 650 to 653, which outlines in great detail um, the domestic debt, and that is the local debt, Mr. Speaker, and there, the balance as of December 31st, 2021, stood at $1.5 billion, Mr. Speaker. The, and of importance is the interest payments of $107,666,856, Mr. Speaker. That is the interest on our debt annually. So the minister, and as a government, the minister of finance had to look at ways to manage this. This is, the, this is what we're doing today. This is part of our consolidation and reprofiling. And Mr. Speaker, when I go through pages 60 to 65 in the estimate, the interest rates for our local debts, and the, the honorable member presented this in some reform when he presented. The interest rates, 7.5, 7 7.5, 6%, 6.8%. And in some cases, these bonds and, in, and treasury bills are short term, Mr. Speaker. So today, the minister, we are doing what the Minister of Finance said he was going to do. And the proposal before us is to take a long-term loan, 20 years, including five years grace period. So Mr. Speaker, the Minister also outlined in some detail what he's going to do with the funds. And he indicated that in addition to meeting the um, expenditure, capital expenditure from the estimate, he's going to pay 
land acquisition, part payment, local purchases, and part payment of DFCs, Mr. Speaker. So what I have done is to try to get a listing of our local payables, Mr. Speaker. And as at November 30th, 2022, we have the debt of approximately 132 million in local payables. That is saying that we are owing for rent, and that is persons who are renting to government throughout the country, suppliers of goods and services, persons who have provided services to our government and goods, that's our small businesses, our large businesses, lease payments to the NIC, NIC contributions, a total of 132 million. But what is important, Mr. Speaker, is that almost 64 million of this debt uh, very old debt, Mr. Speaker. And it is critical, it is critical in repositioning that our government pay some of these payables. It is critical. Secondly, when I got the listing for land acquisition, Mr. Speaker, and I've got three schedules here. There's a schedule where cabinet has approved and there are about 31 persons of, and they are large landowners, totaling some $27 million, Mr. Speaker. 31. We have for small landhold owners, another 45, Mr. Speaker. And then we have another schedule with another 36. And these acquisitions were for maybe infrastructural works like placing water tanks and things like that. Mr. Speaker, when I look at those persons, they are from all around. This schedule I have there, and I'll not call the names of the people, they are from Vyesikwe, Millet and Slare, Vana, Laho, and Slare, Boaden, Soufre, Vielite, Vieufort, Belfont, Soufre, Montpanache, Tomazo, Boaden, it is telling us that persons throughout the country are waiting with bated breath for some soulagema for debt that previous governments um, encountered, but we as a government must continue and we must pay it, Mr. Speaker. The same goes for part payments of DFCs, Mr. Speaker. And with your permission, when I look at the schedule that I, was, that I received, for DFCs, Mr. Speaker, I'm looking at a schedule as of last year, the total DFCs, 177 million, Mr. Speaker. Some 84 million was paid. The balance at the moment is some 114 million dollars, Mr. Speaker. And that is design, finance, construct. These are commitments by the previous administration, but as a government, our Prime Minister continued to tell us we do not have to pay attention as to which which administration incurred the debt, but it is a debt of the government of St. Lucia. And we, as a government, should pay it. So, Mr. Speaker, the critical thing for us, and for, to me, the critical message for the public today is that with this debt reprofiling, this government stands, and as, a, as an economy, to save some $40 million in interest payments. To me, as a finance person, this is the most important message from what we are doing today. Apart from ensuring that some of these monies get back into the economy and the persons paid can reinvest and we can see growth in the economy, for central government, we are saving some $40 million in debt expenditure. 
simply by having a long-term view on this debt, a debt that has given us a longer period to pay and at a lower interest rate. So, Mr. Speaker, I stand here and I say to the people of St. Lucia, you have a government that is focused on efficiency, that is focused on good governance, and I support this resolution wholeheartedly, Mr. Speaker. I thank you.